I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? This is Matt once again. We're about to another review, and this is another paid request. This time from Mega Pork Chop Express, and this is for The Fugitive. Now, first off, for anyone interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, it could be a review, topic, reaction, re review, or out of the blue randomness or what have you, I'll get to it as soon as I can. Feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And The Fugitive, to me, is a classic. It's directed by Andrew Davis. And Andrew Davis has a fairly solid career when you look at it, where he started off doing films like The Final Terror, which I actually think is a decent slasher film. You know, it's not gory, sadly. It doesn't have a big body count. In fact, a lot of people make it out of the woods in that movie. I think to some, they will consider that, consider that a very big disappointment. But... I like the cast, I like the look of the film, the cinematography, yeah, I don't mind the final terror. And then he found more of his own in the action genre, doing Code of Silence with Chuck Norris, Above the Law with Steven Seagal, uh, Under Siege. In fact, I think he had worked with Tom Lee Jones in Under Siege, and I'm trying to remember if he did the film The Package with Gene Hackman. And that might have been with Tyler Lee Jones as well. I can't remember if that was Andrew Davis. But I do know he did Under Siege with Tyler Lee Jones. I think that helped get him the role in this as U.S. Marshal Sam Gerard. And of course you have Harrison Ford. And Harrison Ford at this time, uh, this is around like a few years later, he'd be in Air Force One. And I would easily say this is one of Harrison Ford's best movies. Now, it's based on the TV show, which I didn't watch much of the TV show, but I know of it. Here you have Harrison Ford as Dr. Richard Kimball, who is a doctor, and his wife gets murdered by a guy who has one arm. And the other arm is fake. So he wants to find the one-armed man. The cops don't believe him. And what's funny with Andrew Davis is that he also would go on to do collateral damage with Arnold Schwarzenegger, which I do enjoy. And then Chain Reaction, it's all it's all right, but it's a lesser version of this movie. Chain Reaction seemed like he wanted to do this film over again, only it's less successful. Because Harrison Ford is a very likable. Not that you know, like Tiana Reeves isn't, isn't unlikable. He's not unlikable in Chain Reaction, but this one you really get a bit more into feeling for Harrison Ford's character. There's flashes to him and his wife, and the horrible murder of his wife, and. Yeah, uh, a tale of a one-armed man does sound weird and crazy, but we're seeing with his flashbacks, you know, this guy, you'll hit Harrison Ford in the face, and there's contraptions about this area, and again, it's him showing some really good emotional range. Subdued at times, but good, for good reason, but other times, like when he's being talked to by the cops and it 
it's dawning on him that they think he killed her. It's like, you think I killed my wife? You said I crushed her skull, that I shot her? How dare you? You find this man. You find this man. You know, it's like, I'm not doing a good job of it. But Harrison Ford really sells it, and he's like, crumbling. But it's not over the top, so it doesn't feel goofy or silly or laughable. Sincere. But the cops don't believe him. They put him in jail. And then you have this very great hair-raising uh, sequence where you're on a prison bus and he escapes and he jumps off the bus because a train's coming. Uh, very well done. A lot of practical effects. Obviously some other effects were used so that you don't injure someone like Harrison Ford. But for 1993, they're holds up fairly well. Trust me, I've seen films in 2003. Or 2013. They have really bad CGI that they utilized. And they hold up a lot worse than anything in this. Like, And there's some good stunt work too. Like the, the guy who goes off the waterfall. and It's not a big stunt filled movie. But there's some nice you know, set pieces. And what it is. Is all the ingredients working well together. You have a very likable a guy who's easy to root for and easy to feel sorry for. Because even though we're not a doctor, we can relate to this guy wanting to find the person who killed his wife. There's a very personable, simple but personable background to really easily join the hero's journey. I like U.S. Marshals, which is, it's the sequel to this. No Harrison Ford, but it follows Timely Jones's character. But U.S. Marshals is a step down. I, I like the film. I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. But it's a step down for a couple of reasons. Number one, I like Wesley Stites, but his journey of, oh, he's with the CIA, the FBI, whatever the hell he was with, I forget. And wanting to clear his name, it's just not as much of a passionate, that's the wrong word. It's not much of an emotional connection with our lead. Compared to this person murdered my wife. I need to find out who did this. And there's some nice flashbacks Andrew Davis did. Where he's like looking at his wife. And there's even a moment where his wife's talking to him. Like a door slams. To really facilitate Harrison Ford's emotions. To really make us feel sympathy for the character. It's not that I don't feel sympathy for Wesley Snipes' character. But with his situation it's a lot less personable. It's a lot less... It's, it's weird to say relatable, but in a way it is. Like the death of a loved one you relate to more than I'm with the CIA, FBI, unless you're fucking Stevens at all. Maybe it's more, that's more relatable to him. And the other thing is Timely Jones. I'll get back to Harrison Ford in a minute, but Timely Jones, he has so much fun in this. I know he won the Oscar for this, and... I don't know if I would say he deserved the Oscar, but he's a lot of fun in this. And he's good in U.S. Marshals, but because he's more of the star in that film, he has to be more serious. He has to have less humor. He's got to have more of the drama put onto him, and that, in a weird way, takes a little bit away from Sam Gerard because what makes him so great here is that he doesn't need the emotional baggage. He doesn't need the dramatic baggage. That's for Harrison Ford, who does a great job, again, with this real... Easier for me to get emotionally attached to whatever I find the guy who killed my wife, then I need to clear my name for the CIA, FBI, what the fuck. Just, and because Tom Lee Jones doesn't have to have that emotional baggage, he could just have a lot more fun with his role, a lot more free with his role, which probably led to the award circuit noticing. And his... Back and forth with his team, whether it be Joel Pantoliano, who worked with Andrew Davis on the Final Terror way back in the day, and just the way they talked with each other. With hey, you know, we're fascinated. You want to know why we're fascinated when we find leg iron? What was it? The we're fascinated when we find leg irons without legs in them. What? She's saying, do you want to change your bullshit story, sir? <laughs> okay, I need to check every warehouse, hidden house, dog house in the area. Newman, what are you doing? I'm thinking. Well, think me up a cup of coffee, okay, while you're over there thinking. 
or later on where even when Harrison Ford is in the sewer, like the tunnel, I didn't kill my wife. And Tom Lee Jones goes, I don't care. <laughs> and it's a great response. It's not the typical response like, hey, we'll talk about this. Like, I don't care. It's like, I almost want him to say, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Uh, that probably would have been funny if he said, I don't give a shit. But he, he says, I don't care. Even the little bit like afterward when uh, Harrison Ford jumps into the waterfall and Joey Pants come, uh, Joel Pantoliano comes up to Tommy Lee Jones. What happened? This guy did the Peter Pan right off this dam. What? Yeah. Boom. Holy shit. And then they're leaving, and then it's like, man, we're never going to get out of here. Like, they can't get out of the tunnels. I mean, that's a certain fun, likability, relatability to Sam Gerard's character. Yeah. What do you mean, Drain? Uh, this guy's fish food. He's you got, You're out of mind. He's dead. Well, then that ought to make him easier to catch. <laughs> so, like, Tom Lee Jones is a lot of fun. And he's having much more fun with the role, again, because he doesn't have the dramatic... He, he doesn't have to be super serious. And even in times of series, there's still that glint of his eye of humor, which is a nice parallel and difference to Harrison Ford, who is using more of his brains and his connections. You realize that this guy is very well connected and a lot of people liked him and he's trying just trying to do the right thing. Um, there's even a point where Julianne Moore, yes, a very early role from Julianne Moore. This is before... She was in Hannibal in 2000, The Lost World, Jurassic Part 2 in 1997. Very early role, and she's a doctor, and Harrison Ford sees his kid and helps him out. It's these little things that he does that makes Tom Lee Jones think more and more on to what, what is really going on. And the movie's like over two hours, but I never felt it. Just, it kept me interested... Right, I've seen this film quite a few times, but it kept me interested to see what was going to happen next. You know, where is Harrison Ford looking to this one-armed man, looking to the intricacies, how many people have this certain thing here and this certain thing here, and <clears throat> trying to find from person to person. And then Sam Gerard and the way his team, the very fun banter among his team. The score, I really got to mention that James Newton Howard, he did the score. And this score, a lot of times afterward would be used in trailers. For example, I believe Outbreak, the film Outbreak in 95, used music from, in the trailer for this film. And among others, it's a really good score. And... Bon, da, na, na. I'm doing a shitty job of it. I sh should stop trying to do that. But the reason I mention musical, if I don't mention the music in a movie, in a review, is because it was either forgettable or forgettable or shitty. Music, I've said it before, I'll say it again. It can help so much. Even a simple scene where... Harrison Ford is in an ambulance. He's being chased by the cops. He goes to a tunnel. Having that music play under it gives the auditory responses of, okay, it's not like a car chase out of the French connection, but I'm still, you're pulling me into the movie because, hey, really good music is playing and I like these actors. And I'm curious of the plot. Where is this going? They're all ingredients that help your movie just get better. And that's why I think a lot of times nowadays the score is underutilized or not as prominent or not as thought of as I think it should be. Like some people forget just how important the score is for any film, let alone a film like this. And like I said, it's a good cast. I mentioned you know, Harrison Ford, I think, does a great job. Tommy Jones, it's a lot of fun. Joel Pentoliano, like I said, he was in The Final Terror. Andrew Davis's, I don't know if it was his first film, but an early film. He was also in The Matrix. He was in one of the the bad guys in The Goonies, the, the Capellis. Was that the last name? I should know the, the bad guy's name in The Goonies. 
He's one of the three. He was the one with the, the glasses. He's been a lot of stuff. A drone crab, who we see early on as a friend of Harrison Ford. He was the bad guy in Dolph, Lundgren, Dolph Lundgren's film The Punisher. He was the main bad guy in that. I mentioned Julianne Moore. Like I said, uh, what, was, what was the girl? Was it Jane Lynch? It's the woman who's now the host of the reboot, The Weakest Link. And she's been in a lot of stuff. I forget her name. I think it's, She's actually one of the, the doctors who goes to... Harrison Ford goes to, to help and get some info. And yeah, I forget her name. If it's not Jane Lynch, it's Jane something. I yeah, should remember. But... It's a very entertaining suspense film. I think with likable characters, good locations. The guy is in love with Chicago. And he knows how to shoot that city fairly well. You saw that in his previous films, like Code of Silence, Above the Law. Uh, both good movies. And... I say, when you get serious business in there, it's also nice people forget that you can't have levity. And just how much is it? If you try to be bullshit comedy like The Predator, where you have Thomas Jane, F -f 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 fuck me, fuck me with an aardvark. You're stupid SNL goofy bullshit. And I mean the SNL today, not when it used to be good, but the SNL today, which is bullshit and dick. Here, you have fun levity. Like when they're looking for Harrison Ford, it's like a... I forget if it was a station. I forget where, but... He has his other guys with him. And they're saying all these big words. Tom Lee Jones, he goes, I don't want you guys to use big words around me. Especially if they don't have any meaning, okay? And when he walks away, the guy goes, how about bullshit? How about bullshit, Sam? <laughs> how about you use that word? How about bullshit? How about bullshit, Sam? It's been a while since I've seen this. I forgot, like, this is, at times, a rather sincerely funny movie. Anyway, I said the action scenes, they're not going to be, you know, I'm, if you're going into this for action scenes, they're not anything that big, huge, intricate. I said there's, there's decent set pieces as in you know, a guy jumping off the waterfall and the, I would say the best one is the beginning with the, the train and the bus sequence. Oh, I did this little fight in the subway, and it, again, it's nothing that's going to be big, huge, it's not fucking John Wick or anything. But for this kind of film, it was fine. It was fine. You know, I don't need Harrison Ford to do Kung Fu. He's a doctor. I think for what he's supposed to be as a doctor, what they have him do is, even though some of it, like, jumping off the waterfall is over the top, in the fight in the subway is reasonable for a guy who's supposed to be a doctor, not a fucking CIA guy. It's just too bad because of the way the plot is. Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones did not get to have too many scenes together. I thought you didn't care. I don't. Just don't tell anybody. And because I think they could have some really good back and forth, but again, it's just. That's just the, how the movie is. They want they're just not a lot of opportunity opportunities to do that. Unless maybe like some maybe a couple other phone conversations or maybe there's a point where they're talking to each other and it's this place they they can't get through. But then how do you so it's not too contrived? So it it is what it is. But yeah, the Fugitive is a very entertaining film. I know they rebooted the TV show. I think they did it one time with Tim Daly, I believe. Like, after this. And then, like I said, they did the sequel, U.S. Marshals. Which, like I said, I like the film. I don't love it. But, you know, Tom Lee Jones is still good. Uh, but it's a step down. I mean, the first time you see Sam Gerard is undercover in a fucking chicken suit. Just trying to sell, like, fried chicken. And he takes the hat off and he goes in wearing a chicken suit. I went, okay. This is not going to be as good as The Fugitive, is it? 
Tom Lee Jones is in a chicken suit. Fuck. But it's not an awful film. Like it's I like the film. It'd be like a like this is easily like a four out of five star movie. Why not higher? I don't know, four and a half and five, I just give it to like the best of all time. So sometimes I have no reason. But uh you know, US Marshals would be like maybe a three out of five. So it, it's not horrible. It is a step down though. But yeah, this is a, a solid film. Like I said, I mean, it'd be nice if some of the action scenes later on did rise up to the occasion of the prison bus scene. I just have to deal with it, but the more I think about it, yeah, it would be nice if some later on. You do have a fist fight that Harrison Ford has with Jerome Crab. Which feels like it's going on too long because Harrison Ford's character purposely makes it that way. Like, it seems like there's many times he could have just taken Jerome Crab out easily and he's just kind of like letting him go and doing this and I'm like I guess maybe to make him suffer. But I don't know like it comes to a point where you kind of you could go at him more and you hang him back but then you both end up going through a skyline and you land on an elevator and I'm like you're being kind of stupid Richard Trimble. I, I did. You want revenge, but you know, come on, you're smarter than this. <laughs> so that was kind of weird. Like again, it, if you watch it again, again, you see that this seems like times that he could take out Drone Crab easily, and then he's kind of like almost like taking his time, like walk. I don't know. Just as so I we're on the rooftop, we gotta somehow get to the basement. I don't know if it, maybe the fight needed to be more frenzied or more kinetic or more struggle and fast and then go into it or not as drawn out or I don't know, it's just something about that. I don't know how to word it. I'm sure people like, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. But still a, a solid film. It's definitely one of Harrison Ford's best films of the 90s. And... It was a big hit. It was a big box office. I think this was actually nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars. I said, I know Tom Lee Jones was nominated for, or he won for Best Supporting Actor, but I believe this was nominated for Best Picture. That's fine. I think it's worth it compared to some other films that came out that year. But, uh, yeah. With that said, it's a good movie, The Fugitive. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.